the studio. In the studio with me now, Glynis Barber. I'm so excited. Can I show you something really exciting and amazing? Oh, yeah. I've got a scar because of you. <gasps> An actual scar. Oh, God, now I feel guilty. No, 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 do, do. Look, look at this. Can you <laughs> do you feel guilty, OK. Can, can you see on my thumb... Just uh, up there. Yeah. Right, that's a little tiny scar. I, I watched an episode of Dempsey Make Peace uh, and I was overexcited because I'm given to bouts of giddiness and yes. overexcitement. And as I was watching the end of the episode, um, I was called out and told sparklers, because it was bonfire night, and I was told sparklers at Nun and Pop, so we had to go out and do sparklers. And I was like, oh, what's your Dempsey Make Peace? And they said, we're sparklers now. So I ran out <laughs> and just went with my sparkler <laughs> and threw it on the floor. And my dad said, don't put your sparklers on the floor put them in the bin of cold water and I wanted to get back in and see the end so I picked up the sparkler off the floor and gave myself an almighty burn and that's the the leftover now scar. That's funny. Let me see it again. It doesn't look like a burn. It looks like a scar. No, it's a, it's a burn scar. <laughs> It's a burn scar. scar. It's a hybrid. It is. No, it split all my skin because the burn was. Sorry. So, so, that, that, you, I'm but no, sorry. I think that's way cool. <laughs> you should. You should be impressed that somebody's actually. I had lots of bruises when I did Dempsey May piece, but they've gone now. Now I've got bruises from this play. <laughs> I'm oh, no, running what? around the stage. I'm oh, covered in bruises again. Oh, I thought, I thought you were going to say this place. I was going to no. say BBC Coventry and Warwickshire. <laughs> it, it does do that. It's quite roughy tufty, but you get the hang of it. Is it? I've been here less than 24 hours, so I don't know yet. Well, you didn't sleep terribly well last night. No, I didn't. I didn't. I was. Um, I checked into a no smoking hotel, mm. and my room smelt so badly of smoke. Yes. That I couldn't sleep. I I, lit I fell asleep and then I woke up not able to breathe. It was sort of in the back of my throat. It was in my not. I was. It was really weird. I was completely overcome by the smell, and I and I I had to open the window and stick my head out. And I, I nearly. I thought maybe I should go out of the room because I think I need air. And then I thought, no, I can't. I'm in my pajamas. That could that could turn out badly because there are quite a lot of dodgy men in this hotel. So I I open. <laughs> Where are you? For don't ask, sake. don't ask. Are they coming and going ask. by the hour? <laughs> it's it's quite scary actually. So then, uh. I, then I um so I, I literally and this is the life I lead. Yes. At five o'clock in the morning I opened the window and stuck my head out. So if anyone was looking and saw a strange woman gasping for breath outside a window at five o'clock in the morning, that was me. They wouldn't have butted an eyelid, <laughs> I'm sure. But how funny that it should affect you so badly when it was... No, no, no it was, you, you have no idea how, how strong and overwhelming. I don't know what this person was doing. I mean, they must have smoked 150 cigarettes in a 24-hour period or something. It's completely... I mean, my hair smells of it, my clothes smell of it. And apparently there's no other room, so... Anyway. Oh, no. Are you an ex-smoker? I have smoked. I smoked mm. on and off in my life, but I haven't smoked for a very long time. Because ex-smokers feel the smell of smoke, don't they, worse than people who've never I think smoked. I have quite a strong sense of smell as well. My, my senses are very sharp, you know. Are they? Yes. I can tell. Is that <laughs> yoga that does that? Um, I'm sure it has something to do with it mm. yes yoga does everything doesn't it it sharpens the senses make you better i don't do yoga i just eat biscuits um so well, I, I don't do really a know bit of that as well do you yes best biscuit best biscuit um i not sh anything that involves chocolate really mm. i'm heavily into chocolate i don't know i think they might be foreign biscuits and they're sort of rectangular and they biscuit on the underneath and then thick chocolate on the top. La, Do you know the ones I mean? Liebens biscuits. Yes, that yes. sounds about Those are quite nice, aren't mm. they? Yes, they are. I, I'm not the world's biggest um, chocolate fan. Oh, so no, wow. yeah, we were just talking about fig rolls. I, I like no, a fig roll. No, it doesn't do that. I, I like cake. Oh, well, I like cake. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't really be saying this as I've, no. as I have my yoga DVD and all things healthy, should I? But I was going to say in moderation. Yeah. In moderation. You, there's no you. You don't. Cake hasn't even looked at you in a disdainful way, woman. For heaven's sake, you don't look like you do eating you wouldn't cake. Believe the amount of cake I ate last week. Go on then. And Try anyone, me. anyone who, and I believe you, you went on Twitter today. <laughs> yes, I did. Yeah, I that. went on two months ago, and anyone who follows me on Twitter mm. will tell you that I was in mould last week. Were you? I was, mm. and there was no Wi-Fi anywhere, right. and the only place that had Wi-Fi was a little cake shop called Scrumptious, truly Scrumptious, Ooh. and they had big homemade cakes. And Wi-Fi. And every day I went there and sometimes it would be closed and sometimes it would be open and I'd sort of stand at the window going, let me in, let me in. And when I finally got in and I had my computer and my Wi-Fi and then I said, well, I'll have a 
I said, when was the, the newest baked one? And they said, the Victoria sponge. And they literally <laughs> cut me a slice that I think was a quarter of the cake. Mm. And I went, oh my God, that's ridiculous. I, and before I knew it, I'd eaten the entire thing. Oh, I was even it. scraping the crumbs off, <laughs> off the plate. Yes, so. but I bet you worked hard to get rid of it, didn't you? Because you aren't quite, you know... Oh, well, I, I'm working hard on stage. I, I don't have time for much else does at the it, moment. Does it take it out of you in a physical way? Because you're at the Belgrade at the moment. Yes, and... it does. Eight shows a week will do it. It, mm. it's, um, it takes a, a tremendous amount of stamina. Um, you know, e- even if you're just standing around a bit, um, you know, just you- you're basically shouting, aren't you, when you're on stage? Because you have to project, so that's basically shouting. So you stand on stage and you shout for two hours. I mean, that takes quite a bit of energy, really. Mm. And I do run around and go up and down ladders and up and down stairs and um, run around a bit on the stage. So um, it sounds like kind of like being in my house every night, <laughs> just under that shouting for two hours and running around. A well, bit. you see that. That is the brilliance of Akebourne because mm. it is exactly like it's somebody's house at Christmas time, and it's exactly like being in somebody's house, that's, except better written. That's the well, I was going to say, that, but that's that was very showbiz the way you said that. That's the brilliance of Akebourne, <laughs> darling. Was that a bit lovey? Was oh, that yeah. a bit lovey? No, it's fine. It's fine because it's been. You haven't. I was reading um, your biography earlier on. You, you, you've sort of you've done loads of theatre over the years. You were even you were with the RSC for a bit, yeah. but it's been a little while for you, hasn't it? Before yes. And um, this is the first play I've done in five years because mm. I've been on on the telly doing various things. And uh, yes, and it's and I love it. I mean, I lo- absolutely love theatre. Although when I get there, I go on the first night when I'm absolutely shaking with nerves. Go, why? Why do I do this to myself? And then, of course, it's hard work and touring's hard work. Mm. You know, Saturdays are sort of brutal. Two shows and then driving back to London from wherever you are, which last Saturday was mould. So, you know, got into bed at three o'clock in the morning and then the next one you get up and you're on the road again. So it's 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 hard work. It must, it must play Mary Hell, seriously, with your head because you, you can't... Do, do you Are you aware of where you are? Or is it, is, you know, um, it's Wednesday, it must be New York or mold. Yes, and what throws you? I mean, every Monday night you're in a different theatre. And every theatre has got a different shape, it holds a different amount of people, you have to project differently, you know, obviously the backstage is different and um, it's sort of like changing house every week. So you have, you know, you've got the same set and everything looks the same but it's all strangely different and uh, so, you know, we all go on the stage on Monday and sort of look around and go, okay, and uh, get used to it and it's, you know, and then just by the end of the week then you really get used to that theatre and you you sort of know all its, you know, strengths and weaknesses and how to play it and you, you know, and every, all the audiences are different and all the towns, the, the audiences, ha- you know, have different personalities. Can you tell from where you are? Oh, absolutely. How? From their reaction. Mm. You know, some people sit very quietly, some people are sort of laughing and uh, enjoying themselves and are kind of loud and extrovert, and then you get introvert and you get well-mannered, <laughs> you get drunk, <laughs> you know, you get all kinds of things. So, um, and uh, and by the end of the week, as you're getting used to it, then you have to move on to the next one. Mm. But, but that, in a way, must keep it interesting, because otherwise you are going on That's doing the true. same thing every night. Yeah, yeah. Although I have to say, I mean... And, and it's true that is one of the problems of the play doing the same one after a while it can get boring but uh I, you know, we're all finding this one qu- quite challenging i mean i think when you watch Akeborn, it looks you know just regular and easy but but actually it is quite challenging and uh it, it, it's such a busy play. There's so much business and and things to do. I spend the first 25 minutes decorating a Christmas tree, which, as you know, takes a, quite a bit of concentration, at the same time as delivering a huge amount of dialogue. I mean, the other night I was so intent on one bauble mm. that I nearly forgot my line. I went, I, I, there was a silence on stage. I went, oh, all right, that's me, that's me. Because, it, it, you know, we're all good at multitasking, but, I mean, it's it's ridiculous. You, there's so many things going on in your head. What kind of bauble is it to take your concentration like that? It was a little gold acorn, if you must know. Oh, no, I must. Yes. I really must. I, I have tinsel. Do you? I have baubles. Yeah. I have little Father Christmases. I have all kinds of things. It, well, it's, it, it's very important to me. It is. I love Christmas. I, well, I do. I, I'm slightly sick of it at the moment, but I do too. Well, that's, I, was I hope this doesn't that. ruin decorating Christmas trees for me, as I'll have done it 500 million times by the time we get to Christmas. Well, I was going to ask you that. 88 sleeps to go now till Christmas. That's all there is. 88 sleeps. I take a week off every year to put my tree up and do the decorations. Do you, well, mm. I do hope you're coming to see this 
play. It's obviously up your street. Well, I, I might be persuaded if you dedicate me a little gold acorn. So, but, the, <laughs> but it's the best thing in the world is putting the tree up. But you, know. you'll be like, oh, whatever, and chucking it in the corner now, won't you? Well, I might actually steal this tree and just take it home with me. Good shout. Yeah, <laughs> don't you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Free trees, but you, oh, but I'm I'm going straight from this into a panto for the first time in my life. Oh, you've so never I've done no panto. time for Christmas actually this year. No, I've never done panto, and I've only seen about two. Oh, yeah. Oh, mm. it, it'll be all right. That really, so? yeah. I hope so. Nobody's going to know if it's gone wrong. That's what is. Well, that what, is like, quite comforting, show. actually. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll you'll be fine. You'll be fine. No, who are you in panto with? Anyone exciting? I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm in Tunbridge Wells, I can tell you that. Well, that's Sleeping Beauty. Mm. Oh, Are you beauty? God, no, I'm, I'm much too old for that. I'm the bad fairy. Oh, nice. Channeling yeah, a baddie. and I'm going to fly. Are you? Yes. Oh, isn't, doesn't that... I don't know whether to be excited or scared. Oh, no, be excited about okay. flying. But it, it might, you know, chafe a bit. It might. Mm. I don't I know. know. It might be a bit high as well. I'm trying to think of a top tip I could offer. <laughs> Padded long johns, maybe. <laughs> Can you buy that? Have you ever ridden horse? Uh, not much. O- only only um, in a film, side saddle and a corset. Oh. oh. It's the only way I can ride. I don't think they'll make you fly in a corset and side <laughs> saddle. Well, that might, might, might be quite tricky. I wish I hadn't, I wish I hadn't ever mind ridden on, that. in films. Isn't that funny? It's the only time I've ridden. You've never ridden in real life? No, only in films. Oh, it's very uh, it's very not for years. Is well, it? Do you ride? Oh, I have done, yeah. Uh, not so much now. I've got a bit of an iffy back. It's all the biscuits. Yeah. Takes it out of you. But you, it's, 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 you're going to have to do some yoga, aren't you? Well, people keep recommending it to me. I had to go on my Wii um, doing, or, or any generic, obviously games are available, etc. But um, I had to go. It was a bit boring. It was a lot of breathing and standing, and I'm not very good at standing still. Well, trust me. Right. Um, it's, even though you're standing still in a position, mm. the most simple position done properly it takes takes quite a lot to you know that you, you can take the most simple pose and think you know it mm. and you can go on doing it and and as as you get more experienced you will bring more and more and more to that pose it shouldn't be boring and the breathing should feel great right the breathing is really really good for you i don't think i got the hang of it glynis that was the problem well, you better watch Sky 275, where they're serialising my anti-ageing secrets, yoga, DVD, and doing all that sort of stuff. Mm. Um, uh, well, I, I, shall, I shall try. But d- d- the breathing thing, it was quite tricky, because it's, it's ins and outs and ins and outs. And, well, and breathing does tend to be. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's outs and ins in different ways. Well, I- you start simply. It's just start simply. It's, yes. it's just about breathing to the right place. You want to breathe into where the diaphragm. Where are you diaphragm. breathing into? Well, you've, first of all, you've got to be... In a good pose, you've got to mm. stand properly. Yes. You don't want to breathe and raise your shoulders. You want to keep your shoulders down. You mm. could lie on the floor, bend your knees a bit. I can't lie on floors in case a spider comes. It's a, it's a phobia. Are you serious? No, absolutely. Dead set. I can't lie on the floor. I really can't in case, in case a spider a comes. In case a spider comes. Yep. Hmm. You never come across that one? Not quite. Okay, you're going to have to stand then. Mm-hmm. Right. So you need to stand, um, you know, in a, in a good posture which yeah. is sort of feet is it tell me when this gets boring feet uh, <laughs> hip hip length the hip width apart yes you know relaxed um shoulders down sort of neck straight chin slightly down mm. pelvis tucked under a little bit and then you breathe in your diaphragm breathe in through your nose mm-hmm. breathe out through your nose slowly to the count of three say so you don't use your mouth at all it's all ins and outs through your nose through your nose oh yeah oh and you've got to be, don't raise your chest, don't raise your shoulders. And it's incredibly good for you, very calming. You'll, it'll help you defeat that little fear of spiders. Oh. Gets rid of anxiety. Does it? And makes, get, you need lots of oxygen in your body, you know, because most, most of us shallow breathe. Most of us don't breathe properly, so. Oh. Not to be underestimated, breathing. No, well, no, breathing's, uh, it's hereditary in my family. We've all done it. <laughs> but I, I can't do deep breathing through the nose. I've had a cold and I daren't breathe out too hard through my nose because, you know. Blow it you know, first. I, okay. <laughs> Wait till the cold is over. Uh, uh, Nasal spray. <laughs> I'll give it I'll give it a good go. So how long are you here in Coventry then? Just a week. We do a week uh, in each place. And I don't think I've been to Coventry before. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice theatre. 
It's a lovely yeah, theatre, isn't it? Yeah, very nice the theatre. Yeah, very nice theatre. Um, so I, I do believe this is my first visit, although I do tend to forget things because uh, I thought I'd never been to Mould before. And the company manager who I had worked with before absolutely assures me I have. But I have absolutely no memory, so I've, I'm convinced he's wrong, actually. So, 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 I know that, I'm forgetful, but I, you'd think it would, you know, look vaguely familiar, but no. Showbiz, what a life you lead, not remembering going somewhere like Mould. I know. Fancy. <laughs> How, no. can, how, can how could remember? anyone forget that? But how can you not remember somewhere you've... I've, I'm pretty sure I remember everywhere I've been in the world ever. Well, I thought the same about myself, but the company manager seems to think not. Maybe I'm the, a bit worried, so I, I don't, don't think I've been here. Maybe you were, like, hypnotised or something <laughs> and taken there, put there for three weeks, no memory of it, abducted by aliens. Well, in possibly mold. by Dennis Waterman, because I think it, she, it was in a play with him, apparently, I went. Oh, oh, you'd remember that? You'd think so. Well, yeah. I remember the play, and I remember him i just don't remember going to mold you wouldn't forget dennis waterman dennis waterman's been worrying us here Has on the he? afternoon show Why? his teeth oh yeah uh, um, we think there's there's a bbc tooth wardrobe and he's been sharing with people because they're not quite right you know like the expression um oh i've got my mother's teeth in no, I've never yeah, heard, I've that, heard one, that. No. You know, if you slip of the tongue, oh, it's my right, mother's right. teeth. Okay. Kind of thing. He looks like he's actually got my mum's teeth in, and I don't Your know. Your Yes, I don't know what's happened to him. I haven't. I haven't paid that much attention to Watch his teeth. Watch new tricks. Yes, Watch new tricks. I will. And yeah, because they they were all right. Well, I was in new tricks with him a year ago. So, or so. you were. Yeah. <laughs> now I must start before you skedaddle. Yeah. EastEnders. Are we going to see you back? Because I thought you were amazing in that. Well, thank you. I. Do you know, I honestly don't know. Mm. I mean, you know, because I'm busy doing other things and they just, they, they keep changing their minds in soap. You know, right, this is what we're going to do. Those people are off. Okay, right, now these people are back. And, you know, they just they just change their mind on a whim. Mm. So I really don't know. I'm just sort of getting on with things and uh, getting on with my life. It's very intense while you're there. So to be honest, um, I loved it, loved it, loved it. But I'm quite enjoying myself now doing other things, you know, doing some theatre, doing my, my yoga things. And uh, so I'm having a great time. Uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Go back in it and be bad. You needed to be badder. I think they needed to explore your badness more. <laughs> well, you know, you know what I. I mean, look, there's a lot of badness and horribleness in EastEnders. What I, where I thought Glenda was quite fun, is that she was funny bad. You know, she would just say things because I never set out to make her bad. I never mm. thought, okay, she's wicked, she's bad, she's horrible. That thought never even entered my head. And it, then, and people would say this to me: "God, you're so horrible." That was quite offended. Really. Really. Then I saw myself on screen and I went, OK, I do actually see what they mean. But I think she just sort of was a bit blunt. She'd say things without thinking and, you know, slightly narcissistic. But I think I think what people, what I'm getting from people, what they enjoyed, is she'd come up with something that was, you think, oh, how can you say that? But but it was actually quite funny. Yeah, no, it was. And I, actually, I think that it, that's quite a good thing to have in EastEnders, Definitely. you know, to have that sort of humour um, without trying to be funny as it were mm, you know mate. that sort of put down humour so oh god we've got to go because it's time for the travel but thank you very much indeed season's greetings until the end of the week <laughs>